Welcome to the Interesting Podcast episode number 169. <laughs> nice. This episode is with the multi-talented and hilarious B. Dave Walters. Not only is he a fantastic writer and DM, he's also just really fun to hang out with. We talk about always doing multiple things at once, being a black belt in more than one martial art, touring as a bodyguard with Evanescence, yeah, that Evanescence, being inspired by Shakespeare to become a writer, why he moved to L.A., the process of writing Dungeons & Dragons, A Darkened Wish, his upcoming documentary, Dear America from a Black Guy, and so much more. B. Dave is awesome, and you're going to love him. Be sure to catch him as the DM on Invitation to Party, The Scoundrels of Waterdeep, Fridays at 3 p.m. on G4. But before you do that, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 169, with B. Dave Walters. Cue that theme song. The only time, well, the, the thing is, the stuff I do is all fun stuff. Like, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i blessed for the most part to do things I would be doing for free. So it's sure. not work as such. That is one of the hardest parts, though, about being a, a content creator, your own boss, solopreneur, is when you are off and allowing yourself to be off. Mm. Uh, the only time I ever really successfully stop 100% is when I'm spending time with the girls. When I'm sure. like, and I'm, put, I'm putting in FaceTime with the younglings you know everything else can go off but if i'm just sitting here yeah three mm-hmm. things are happening yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. Three, three three things are happening at any given time i'm the exact same way i'm i'm not <laughs> good with free time at all like i should be especially if you have i find that like people that are dreamers that are also driven it's yep. you'd i'd rather be making steps toward making the dream a reality than like taking a break if that makes sense yeah man it's yeah. um i i'm i am aware of the fact um that I have a maximum capacity. Uh, sure. I don't like to. I don't like to admit it, but I, it theoretically it exists. Sure. Um, and you know, on occasion, I can feel when it's approaching. But I mean, like recently, I, I've taken steps to like free up my weekends. Like I, I made a point to not have any more um, consistent weekend obligations. Like I still do a lot of like charity work and one shots and stuff on the weekend, but not to have any more weekend shows, for instance. So it's sure. like I have two. You know, two theoretically. Yeah. <laughs> Unfiltered days. Right. <laughs> Were you always like that? Like growing up? Did you always do a lot of things? Mm. Yeah, but I mean the hustle wasn't like this real until Sure, sure. Mm. Makes sense. Because you're you're I, in LA now, yeah. I am. You're not center of the known universe. No. <laughs> I'm from I'm from Little Rock, Arkansas. Really? And then I li- I lived in Atlanta for seven years. And then I've been here for quite a while since. Yeah interesting where's home in your head like when you think about it here yeah yeah makes sense Mm -hmm. makes sense have you gone back to atlanta or arkansas since you moved yeah but not often um i've been i spent more time back in atlanta than i have in arkansas and it it just it puts me to sleep you know oh sure like (laughs) atlanta was a good starter city i think if i'd come straight from little rock to here the culture shock would have been a bit much fair um but spending some time in Atlanta, I was like, oh, this is a freeway. You know, these are mm. concerts. Sure. You know, I, I, I comprehend urban sprawl. You, you know, not yeah. <laughs> everything is is 10 minutes away. And sure. then, um, you know, L.A. L.A. is Atlanta on hard mode. L.A. is almost everywhere on hard mode. Yeah. yeah. Makes sense. And being the mm-hmm. epicenter with so many things garnering attention. And if you're busy, even more so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah people sense. always talk about like leave, you know, everybody should live in New York, but leave before you get too hard and everybody should uh, uh, live in L.A., but leave before you get too soft. Sure. That is not true. Yeah. <laughs> this place will grind you into dust and not pause for a second. Like you remember that Destiny's Child when Kelly just fell of and the course. other two of them turned and just looked at her. Yeah, yeah. that's L.A. That's, that's, that's L.A. Yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I mean, yeah. important to know. It's important to mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. But, did you go to LA yeah. to make stuff? Uh, I didn't. I actually came here. Um, I, I came here working as a bodyguard originally. Oh, what? Um, really? Yeah, for the for the uh, for the rock band uh, Evanescence, 
And um, what? Yeah. You're not throwing and, that and, one away, dude. You know, How? that's a, it, it, well, I, I grew up with those guys. Same thing. They're from Arkansas. Oh, and what? Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I got black belts in a couple different disciplines. Hell yeah. And, um, and, and one of my buddies, Ben Moody, was like, hey, um, you should come be head of security for the whole band. And Dude. I was like, no, uh, <laughs> nothing in my training makes me responsible for like 50 people's lives. Like, no, you know, good point. And, 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 and he kept calling and he kept um, every time the deal was a bit better, bit sweeter, bit sweeter. And so finally he was like, I'll pay you double what you're making. You can be just my bodyguard and I'll pay it all in advance. Dude. And I was like, I mean, again, if you're going to twist my arm, like if you're yeah. going to violate my civil rights, you know, <laughs> I guess I'll do it. Sure. You know, you know, and, uh, no. And that was, uh, wow. went, went, went all over the place in, in all the sex, drugs and rock and roll. And all of that is a thousand percent true. Uh, I don't know. Sure. If it's the rockers trying to keep up with movies or movies trying to keep up with rockers, but yeah. that is exactly how it goes down. Like the, it's all everything you see on TV actually happens. Sure. Um, and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a wild time. And I came out, but you know, my ambition, I always wanted to be a writer. I oh, cool. did not fancy myself an actor at all, but I kept getting pulled into things. There you go. And I just liked it and thought it was fun. And sure. then here we are. Yep. Wow. What martial arts did you do? <laughs> uh, my black belts are in Shaolin Kung Fu and in Tai Chi. Awesome. But, I, but I've done a little of everything. I was um, I, I, I Kimpo Karate, a lot of MMA, Muay Thai, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Five Animals, Five Families, Kung Fu, uh, a Dude. bunch of stuff. If 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 I just um, if if the human body can do it, I've done some of it. At least when it when it when it when it, when it comes to fisticuffs. Sure, mm. that's mm -hmm. awesome. Did you have a favorite? Oh, Shaolin Kung Fu lives yeah. rent free in my heart. Yeah, gotta be. That's so cool. I did Shorin Ru, yeah. which is a Japanese karate mm -hmm. for like three or four years. And mm -hmm. it was I'm awesome. Familiar. That's uh that's uh Shaolin Kung Fu that was taken to uh taken to Japan was the root of Shorin Ru. That's the yep. Shorin and Shorin Ru. Yep. yep. So mm -hmm. cool. We're like martial arts cousins. That's it. <laughs> you know. I've now been I've been training Eido for over a year. I've got my Eido above me. No, that's that's uh, that is more meditative. I mean, don't get me wrong. If somebody yeah. runs at you and you happen to have your sword, it's going down. But yeah. I mean, primarily. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I think that was true to begin with. Now it's going to go down in a flashy way. You have that yeah. moment where you reach for it and you're like, uh -huh. are you sure? I'm like, yeah, yep. you know, yeah. I like um, to make sure my skills are 200 years outdated. You I know. mean, again, if you happen to have <laughs> the sword, that's it's applicable today in 2021. You know, yeah, that's it's, true. Uh, that's yeah. true. Three foot razor still cuts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's uh, you're a bodyguard, though. First off, I've heard mm -hmm. of Evanescence because mm -hmm. most people, when they mention doing security for like bands, it's usually a local band doing whatever. How long did you do that for? Two or three years. Wow. That's a long yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. That was what, a good time. What are the Evanescence crowds like? uh it was weird watching people that i grew up with and know and like watching like teenage girls and stuff cry for them and i'm like you wouldn't uh... even like that guy if you knew him like trust <laughs> me like I, I don't save your tears child sure. you know he is not worth it you know right. like that was uh you like I mean, just imagine if you know friends of yours if you'd known your whole lives were yeah. suddenly the biggest rock stars in the world basically like overnight that's so wild you're watching daredevil and you're like i know these people mm-hmm that's exactly what happened. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. <laughs> Is yeah. that weird? Yes. Yeah. It's gotta yep. be. But but you know, but I I was happy to see them blow up though. I bet. So, yeah. It was more than anything. What's like the go-to technique when being a bodyguard? Do you grab people and throw them out like a bouncer? Or is it about like re removing the them around? The go-to thing is when everybody is sober, making sure that they know why you're there. Mm. because when they get rowdy later and I would materialize, I knew somewhere <laughs> in the back of their mind, they knew they'd gone too far. Sure. But I mean, it, you know, it's always more important than anything is just always being cool with people, you know, because I mean, any guy, if, uh, you know, if you come at him and I mean, what, 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 we PG 13, I mean, no, what no, are no. We? off the, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, if you come at somebody and you're like, you know, the fuck are you going to do, pussy? I mean, well, he can't help it. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, now, now he has to knuckle up. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, he didn't, he didn't even want to fight, but now he must. Sure. You know, versus if you're just like, hey, man, be cool, relax. 
I'm gonna just need you to step over here. You know what sure. I mean? Need you, need you to just, you know, right. And so that's 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 enough. I need you. I just need you to, you know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. You know, you please and thank you and nice to people. You know that that'll get you a long way. It is like Roadhouse when he's like, "Be nice, be nice," until it's time to not be nice. Sure. That's kind of it. Yeah. Interesting, because I know you're super tall. Yeah, I'm 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 six nine or two point oh five meters for our for our Euro friends. That's did that happen early on? Like, were you young and super tall? Uh, I pretty much was always uh, tall relative to my age. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, I think I was tall. I was the tallest kid in my school every year until um, until the seventh grade. Uh, and there was one girl that was taller than me, but I was taller than her by the end of the year. There you what's go. funny is I mentioned that to my kids the other day and my youngest looked at me and she's looked really confused. And I was like, what? And she's like, Oh, you grew. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> she was like, I thought she made you like tuck her out. Like I was the tallest <laughs> by the end of the year. And I'm like, that's why you're my child. First of all, no, <laughs> <That's right. laughs> I just, I just grew. I just grew. Wow. That's awesome. So I imagine a, a six foot nine bodyguard sends a pretty clear message. I mean, ideally. Yep. Yeah. 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 That's wild. Were there, is there things? Cause I, I love talking about martial arts with people who've done multiple disciplines. Did you find that there was one that was the most useful across situations and having had practical application being a bodyguard for a big band? Uh, I mean, most of it is, is situational awareness is the best thing. You know what sure. I mean? Just just being in tune to your environment, what, what does and does not just feel right and feel wrong, sure. you know? Um, you know, that if something feels wrong, it probably is. You know, if, if, you, if you feel hinky about something, it's probably wrong. You sure. know, um, and learning to trust that, you know, and act accordingly. I right. will tell you the uh, the the moment um, I realized my training was going somewhere uh, was, um, I was I was uh, I was maybe a year in. I don't know. It's fairly early. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had I was over at a buddy's house and um, we'd all crash there for the night because, you know, we would do that. You'd stay up all night playing games or, you know, drinking or sure. whatever. And then, you know, and then just kind of get up and go home the next morning. And um, I was making my way out in the morning and his girlfriend came around the corner and scared me as I was making my way out of the house. Sure. But I, I didn't go like, ah, I went like, ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and when that happened, I was, oh, I guess you can only hear me. I, my, my hands went up as, yeah. in a fighting <laughs> stance, basically. Right. I, I, I went, I was, my, my reaction was to prepare myself to throw. Yes. Which my is, heart I was rate like, went way up. Yeah, just now. exactly. But I was like, hey, all right. You know what I mean? Perfect. Yeah. Conditioned this... reflex responses on point. Exactly. Something's happening here. Something's changing. Yeah. Sure. Something's changing. Yeah. I do love this idea that I now have a view in my head of training in martial arts, but also wanting to be a writer. It's like the idea of the samurai who also does calligraphy and poetry. I mean, Book of Five Rings, Musashi, yeah. Samurai Ideal, man. Yeah. Yeah. That book is wild. <laughs> what, yeah. kind of, what kind of stuff were you into growing up that made you want to be a writer? Uh, I created my first superheroes when I was five years old. Tell me about um, them. It, 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 uh, no, but <laughs> but but they they I still tried. exist and they 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 have been repurposed um, in, into into existing media. They they are they are in electropunk. I will tell oh, you that my, my graphic novel that is they they exist. Yes. Um, as as a part of that narrative. Um, and so I've always just, um, uh, just, just, that's been a thing that always spoke to me from, from the beginning, just enjoying stories and wanting to tell stories. Although I didn't get like serious, serious about it until I was in high school, 12th grade. In fact, when, um, hmm. I was introduced to Shakespeare Ooh. and that was just the Rosetta yes. Stone for me that I was like, Oh, I want to do that thing. But what was weird is Shakespeare didn't make me want to act. Shakespeare made me want to write. Interesting. What's your favorite mm -hmm. play? Macbeth. Oh, I've got to be right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's got everything. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I'm a big mm -hmm. fan. Mm -hmm. I'm into blood so far come that to turn back would be as difficult as to continue over. Yep. Boom. And also, when uh, Jason Carl and I talk to each other mostly in Shakespeare quotes with a smattering of Lord of the Rings quotes, we get through entire Amazing. conversations only with Shakespeare quotes. And we, yesterday, it was said, I won't tell you which one of us said it to who or in what context, but uh -huh. look like the flower, but be the serpent under it. It was like, yep. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's a tattoo. Yep. Mm-hmm. 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 Who's your favorite Lord of the Rings character? I know I asked the hard ones. 
I get you comfortable. And I'm like, mm. pro, pro, that's it. There's a guy. I mean, Laura, you were unwise to lower your defenses. <laughs> yeah. um, probably Elrond. Really? Probably okay. Elrond. I'm in. How come? He was there when the strength of men failed. He was. He was. You know? I was like, he should have yeeted his Sildor into the yeah. lava and saved everybody some trouble. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but you just Sparta kicked him right there. Pow. Agreed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, we'll, well, I'll deal with war with man. Yeah. You know, <laughs> what we're going to win. Gonna do? <laughs> we're going to win this one, though. You know what I mean? Anything yes. could have happened to him in here. You know? Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's one witness. <laughs> yep. I respect that. I always think, you know, that quote when people just walk around and say men ain't shit. I always think Elrond. That's his inner monologue all the time. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's it. It. Yeah. I get it. I understand. He, he he attempted he attempted to warn us all. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and yet, and yet. And I, I think yet. That, that is that is one of those things um uh that people uh overlook. Um mm -hmm. is when Elrond told Arwen what was gonna happen if she stayed with Aragorn. Uh, -huh. uh he was right. You yeah. know, people are kind of like, oh, it's so beautiful. I'm like, you do know that she's just kind of gonna endure eternal torment, right? That yeah. at no point. At no point does any of this refute what Elrond said would happen. Yeah. Uh, got it. Cool, 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 yeah. cool. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt, no doubt. That's like in the same category as people that think like the relationship between Harley Quinn and the Joker is aspirational. It's like, I don't Yikes. think you've been paying attention. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. 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 Dig just one layer deeper and uh, yeah. yikes. Yeah, like this is this is all bad. Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, this is this is not a thing. Yep. It's true. I hear. Oh you. well. Mm -hmm. I hear you. I, I respect the choice. I get it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or he could have just Sparta kicked the seal door and been done with it. You know, saved us all but, uh, a lot of time. Uh, <laughs> just, just a lot of time. Just a lot of time. You know, like we 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 just we just could have gotten where we were going. But yep. alas, Tolkien's works being four pages long. Exactly. We did it, guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, just uh, you know, we're just gonna eat this guy into the lava, and this Perfect. is gonna be a pamphlet. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. this, is gonna, this 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 is gonna be like a like a like a sonnet, <laughs> like a cautionary limerick Can of the imagine? Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Have you, have you read the Tolkien pamphlet? It's wild. <laughs> it's true. It's wild. <laughs> you won't expect the surprise twist ending That's where right. this elf Sparta kicks this dude. Uh, he fit the whole thing the on a t-shirt. <laughs> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Definitely. I'm down. Yep. When you when you said you wanted to be a writer, it was like was graphic novels, was books. Like, did you have a specific thing you wanted to write at the time? Uh, initially, it was comics. And again, uh, ironically cool. enough, uh, when I said I wanted I was inspired by Shakespeare, I never wanted to be a playwright. It was right. like more film. So, I mean, mm -hmm. and now I mean, I've done it all uh, film, television, comics, graphic novels, novels. Um, if it can be done with the written word, I've, I've, I've been blessed to have opportunities to do it now. Cool. Been, like, you know, published, published work, published work. Not sure. just, uh, yeah. Do you like, like, do you have a favorite medium? One that you're like, if you get the opportunity to do them all again, but one you're like, I would really like to do this more. Screenplays. Ooh. Screenplays okay. are easier. Screenplays are faster. Uh, all things being equal, screenplays are more profitable. Um, sure. Yeah, it's uh, it, it's the advantage of a novel is you have all the time and space you need, and you can go into as much detail as you like. In a novel, sure. if you want to spend ten pages describing what a die felt like rolling through someone's fingertips, you sure. could. Right. You probably shouldn't, but you yeah. could. <laughs> a screenplay is a blueprint. You have to say the minimum possible uh, sure. because that is then going to be filtered through the director and through the producers and through the casting agents, and through the actors to bring your vision to life. Hopefully sure. uh, the, the finished product may or may not bear any resemblance to what you intended, but mm -hmm. um, you know, that, that is uh, the, the way of things and the way it goes. Um, sure. Yeah. Um, it's a, uh, but but I, I like it because even when I come up with stories and when I write things, mm -hmm. um, I see it in my mind and then I describe what I see, uh, which Perfect. is why comic books are also really easy for me to write because um, it's like I can see the scene and just describe the scene, you know? Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Do you write like 
do you wait for the muse to hit you and you can only write when you're creative or do you have that like discipline where you can write and just churn it out uh amateurs wait for inspiration professionals go to work yep mm, i like uh, it you know the 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 secret though is to have multiple projects going because there is definitely times um that you can't uh you know it's just not there and the juice isn't flowing but i mean if it's not working on the heist story maybe it will be on the comedy if it's not on the comedy maybe it'll be on the horror movie you know like it's, it's gonna be sure. flowing somewhere i uh, just kind of have to adjust your sales if you really only have the one thing uh there's ways that you can kind of give yourself a little bit of a rolling start you know you can start with um you know, ask yourself what's not going to happen. Um, start uh, intentionally set out being like, well, I know this scene is going to be garbage, but let's just sort of get it going. And sure. then sometimes, you know, the uh, once you're moving, it kicks in and you can go. Yeah. OK. Is that something that like you had to learn to be able to do that? Because I find a lot of people are the paralyzed by the possibilities and also giving themselves permission to fail first can be really difficult. Yeah. Um, I mean, to some extent, uh, there there was a training component, but to a large extent, also, that's just my nature. Like, I'm I'm not really, I'm never really afraid to get knocked down because anybody who is good at anything instantly is probably not doing anything worth doing. So, uh, it, it, yeah, it's 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 super fine to have to uh, struggle a bit because oftentimes the the struggle is in fact the glory. Sure, I've heard mm -hmm. a lot. It's a lot easier to edit a page, you know, once it's been written. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reality is the absolute worst thing you write is better than the best thing you didn't write. Because, um, you know, like in, in your head, it is this pristine, hallowed, sacrosanct thing that when sure. you give give birth to it will not mesh with the vision of pristine beauty and perfection that you envisioned. <laughs> right. sure. You know, as, as it enters into the realm of gravitation and solid mass, it will be born full of flaws. <laughs> sure. you know? But so it is with like literally all of us, literally right. all of us. It, no artist realizes 100% of what they intended ever. So once you accept that, you know, you just try and do better next time. Sure. And was that um, a mindset that you got comfortable with quickly? Or was there a learning curve to be able to do that? I think that came about very naturally. Yeah, that's cool. Uh -huh. Yeah, very naturally. Helps a lot it's with uh, creating. Yeah. Well, you know, you got to enjoy the process. You know, you, you, you've, got, you've got to enjoy the process because... Um, no matter who you are, success is improbable. Mm -hmm. You know, it's improbable. Absolutely. Um, you can do absolutely everything right. And it's still improbable. Um, and even if you're really something special and you've done everything right, it is going to, um, is going to take time, you know, sure. um, it is, it is going, and it is going to take as long as it takes and you cannot rush that process. And if you attempt mm -hmm. to rush it, you're just going to be frustrated and mad all the time when the reality is you're not owed anything. So the best, yeah. that's why it is important to enjoy the process and enjoy the ride and, and go along with the whole thing to whatever end. I agree. And it's mm -hmm. the process is going to take a whole lot longer than the thing. Cause once it's out, mm -hmm. you're like, all right, well that happened. So now we're here you don't want to <laughs> i mean especially if you're blessed to have some success everybody's going to want you to do it again twice as good in half the time sure so yeah <laughs> it's it's all it, it, it's all gonna uh come after you again and again and again sure so you i'm tracking this you did martial arts and then you're a bodyguard mm -hmm. for evanescence you travel mm -hmm. for years you go mm -hmm. through la what made you want to stay in la uh it is in fact the center of the known universe ah fair yeah. enough gravity alone uh, well, you know, it's funny. I used to always joke about LA is the center of the known. You know, I would say that all the time. Then I went uh -huh. to JPL, which is in Pasadena, which is just outside, right. you know, greater LA area. Mm -hmm. And NASA has uh, designated the JPL lab as oh. the center of the known universe. <laughs> I have a sticker from there. It's like, I've been to the center of these. So I'm like, boom, you're I right. I told y'all. You knew. Now it's science. <laughs> That's right. Science. <laughs> right here validation <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i like the fact the the thing i like most about this place is the full spectrum of human experiences going down in about 10 square miles yeah um people are bawling as hard as human beings are bawling on this planet here yeah when people have nothing here yeah. So it's like if you can make it here, you can you can make it anywhere, man. Like if you, if you can climb this mountain, you can do anything.
Uh, I, I love the the access to culture. I love the access to, uh, I mean, anything you can want in life, if it can be gotten, you can get it here. And I come from a place that was not true. Little Rock sure. wasn't like that. <laughs> Atlanta was 50-50. You know what I mean? Like maybe, right. maybe you could get some of it in Atlanta. But I mean, no, it's like New York, LA, London, Paris, Shanghai, Tokyo. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, no, you can have anything. <laughs> There are little versions of those places in LA. Literally. Yeah. yeah. There's, there's little everything. Yeah. Like where, where did, um, I was driving the other day. I don't even know where I was. And I just like turned a corner and it was like little Lithuania. I'm like, word. <laughs> there we okay. go. All right. <laughs> We're in little Lithuania. Okay. There you go. I'm like, I thought Lithuania was little Lithuania, but here we are. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can see that. <laughs> I, I mean, how could you not be inspired by that? just the vast spectrum of humanity mm -hmm. right there it's just that. it's cool. all going down yep and 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 i love it i love it and you know 300 days of sunshine is pretty cool too yeah i say 300 it's more like 350 now i don't know yeah. that's kind of <laughs> that's that is that is sliding into the detrimental category you know what i mean that you were like every day mm -hmm. sunny and bright here but now we're like no every day is sunny and bright here yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. remember clouds yeah. it's like i don't <laughs> You know, I was, I was, I was traveling when I went to game hole con, uh, mm -hmm. I was up in Wisconsin and it rained and I'm like, what is wrong with the sky? <laughs> yeah. I don't... Is that water? Is that water? Yeah. Where is it coming why is from? There, why is there water coming from the sky? Like somebody's sprinkler bill is going to be out of this world. Sure. You know? Yeah. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, being in Florida, uh, I also love LA because you guys have actual nice weather. Whereas in Florida, nobody mentions the 100% humidity. That's that's what I don't miss about Arkansas. A hundred degree heat and a hundred percent humidity when you're Ooh. like, shouldn't I need gills to survive this? When you just yeah. rub your hand through the air and it's soaking wet. Yeah. Yep. You swim through the air. No thanks. Yep. Yep. No thanks. Never need never need to experience that again. I'm good. I don't blame Give me you. Get, sign me up for the dry heat. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. right there well, because we dry dry heat is just is just different. It's just far more tolerable. Yeah. You know what I mean? Versus, and, and that's the thing. When people here complain, I'm like lightweights, you know, yeah. again, I'm like, I'm like, you didn't experience the heat until you were a man. Right. I was born into it, molded by it. Yeah. You know, you let really me tell you adopted the heat. <laughs> let, let me tell you something else. It's a perishable skill, by the way. Like you leave for a while and you go back, like yeah. you're not ready for it again. Oh, no. You're not, you are not ready for it again. Yeah. Sure. Yep. That's mm -mm. funny. Mm -mm. I, I, I feel you. I was born in North Carolina, raised in Florida. And mm -hmm. I have no tolerance for cold anymore. It hits like yep. 70 and I'm like, ah, what's happening? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't like the cold either. No. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This, this is well. It's funny. Before I came here, I thought I was said to me, I want to live somewhere with mountains and oceans. Oh, I don't know where, but I want to live somewhere with mountains and oceans And here. Yeah. You know, that that whole I've yet to do it, but I want to uh -huh. do it. The ski and surf in the same day. You have to. You yeah, to. yeah, I, I, it's, it's, it's still on the bucket list. I'm like, I go. must do just, just for the sake of ballerishness, just yeah. for the sake of being yeah. like, do you know what I did today? You know yeah, what yeah. I mean? Yeah. <laughs> today. today. In a day. Yeah. Today. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. It's so the, cool. You, the, the sea, you get, you got to go surfing in, in like the wee hours, like right around sunrise. Mm -hmm. And then you leave mm -hmm. surfing and then you go up the mountain so you can uh, ski in the day. Gotcha. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. I was mm -hmm. thinking it was the other way around. Mm -hmm. no, no, no. Oh, okay. Nope, nope. You, you, you surf early and then you ski. Yep. Gotcha. It's doable. Mm -hmm. I believe in you. We can do it. <laughs> again, again, purely for the sake of ballerishness. Of course. You know, yeah. Dude, right. I do so many right. things just to say I did it. Not all good things. It's true. But if you, know, you survive it, it's a good story, in my opinion. I mean, spite and pettiness are their own rewards at times, yeah. <laughs> you know? And pay and dividends, they... really, at the end. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know? I'm down with it. I'm down with it. So how long before you, when you got to LA, was it always like, I'm going to take a serious thing at this writing? Because it's one thing to have an interest and a love of something. It's another to pursue it professionally. Um, no. Um, when I got here originally, well, first when I, when I got done, I'll give you the TLDR. When I got done being a go. bodyguard, I went into, uh, I actually went into the insurance business because I started, oh, I nice. started uh, making some money for the first time in my life. Cool. And I started working with a financial planner and I realized awesome. I didn't know anything. And I was <laughs> like, you know, that that's weird that like people don't know this stuff. And, and my, my first child was born around then. And I didn't want to be in a position where I had to go out and tackle people. Understandable. Um, so, um, 
I tell people this doesn't translate in, in audio, but I tell people <laughs> I went from security to security, you oh, know, the, from the, <laughs> you know, from from knuckling up to cash. Basically, yeah, get it. Um, did that for a few years around 2008. The bottom fell out of the market. So that became rough. Um, uh -huh. I realized that, you know, most of what I was doing, I kind of organically was trans transitioning into doing a lot of life coaching, because mm -hmm. as you were setting up financial plans and stuff for people, and it was like, well, what do you even want? What's your dream? What's your goal? What's your ambition? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you want a boat, it's okay to admit that you want a boat, man. Totally. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. give yourself permission to want a boat. You've worked yeah. hard your whole life, you know, <laughs> live your best life. Um, and I started doing more of that around that time. That was when I started doing internet content. Um, cool. But I still was working in marketing because, you know, that, that was my background. And I picked up quite a lot, you know, running my own insurance business. I, I was doing marketing stuff, uh, company to company, doing a lot of IT. And that was when I started streaming. But I still had a day job, you know, oh, wow. there in those early days. Yeah. And um, the, uh, the, the place that I, the last job I had, uh, the new chief marketing officer had brought in a whole team and they let him go and they let us all go. Oh. In, in just a single day, like a single day and night, it laid a sink beneath the waves type thing. Oh, man. And uh, we all, you know, um, I still was was job hunting at the time, <laughs> but I started doing more and more and more streaming because I had more time on my hands. Oh. And, and, and I just looked up one day that I was like, well, I'm making a couple of dollars at this, you know, like maybe I could just go. I yeah. mean, I, I very much had to be kicked out of the nest because by then I already had two kids that Ooh. were relying on me. Yikes. And, you know, the, the, the Ronin, the, you know, the Ronin content creator path uh, is sure. you know, unstable, you know, and I was like, so I wouldn't, I would not have just risked it right. for a long time, maybe never, because if I hadn't had the time, who knew if some of the other opportunities would, would have lined up. That's so, point. you know, I, I definitely had to get kicked a little bit uh, and yeah. learn to fly on the way down for sure. Wow. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I love hearing like early adopters and stuff like that and people that just get into it. Like, what was it about streaming? Um, I mean, it was a chance that if you told me five years ago, probably 10 years ago, definitely that I could like play D and D professionally. I'd have been like, what are you talking about? That <laughs> sure. is not a thing, you know, cause <laughs> I, I came up at a time when it was evil. You know, I grew up during the satanic panic. Sure. Um, in which honestly is probably what kept D and D alive because it became weird and edgy and countercultural. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> it would have just been monopoly. Like, there's not a monopoly sure. fandom, you know. Sure. Um, if there is, the we don't want them. It's true, right? <laughs> I mean, it's, although I do want the boot. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> then, uh, uh, and if uh, then then you know, it went to the time where it was just weird. You know, like being a mm. geek wasn't a good thing. Like that wasn't something you just talked about and were proud yeah. of. You know. I hear you. And, and so then for it to be like. So not only are we all just like dead ass out in the open talking about how much yeah. we love all this nerd <laughs> stuff, other people want to watch us do it, really? Yeah. You know? And it's yeah. like, well, okay. You know? Okay. You Hell know? Yeah. So yeah, it's just been been a good time. That's yep. awesome. I still I'm still wrapping my head around that. The idea that things you could be thrown in the trash can for and then now is the cool thing. I'm like, what what? Huh. I'm very glad for it because I get more t-shirts now and it's more readily available and it's cool, but it's, it's weird, you know? Yep. Yep. It Absolutely. Mm -hmm. When did you start playing D and D like uh, when, I was you? Thir when I was 13, 13, were you a DM yep. immediately or a player first? You know, it's funny. Uh, people keep asking me that like, what's the first time you remember DMing? Uh, -huh. uh, and I don't remember when I started DMing, I think my buddy and I would go back and forth uh kind of taking turns do it so i definitely played first i had an elven fighter mage thief who was based on vampire hunter d nice um great choice you know and um uh somewhere along the way you know what i mean i the 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 roles are reversed and because I, I, I have zero recollection of my first time being like i'm going to run the game sure you know, none yeah interesting do you have mm -hmm. a, do you like dming versus being a player or do, are they interchangeable for you you know, I would always say that I like them both equally, mm -hmm. but what I do realize is anytime I'm given the choice, I always want DM. Like never, never, never once have I been offered to DM and said no. You know what I mean? Sure. Yeah. So I guess, you know, it, it, I have to tip my hat to, to that side, uh, mm -hmm. but I like playing fine. You sure. know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate in that not only do I, I get to play multiple systems, but I 
I'm I'm known for D and D and vampire, both as storyteller and player. So it's mm-hmm. like I get to live in four different worlds, which most people don't get to do. Yeah. So, um, which is something I'm very appreciative of. That's so cool. I love when mm-hmm. I hear that like good people are doing cool things because there's nothing worse than when you see people doing cool things and then you realize that actually they're not as cool. But you can kind of tell with D&D, especially I find that with characters that are created by players, there's way more like invested. It's mm-hmm. a, I don't know. I, I think that's probably what the thing is with people watching it. Why it's so interesting because you're getting a piece of your brain, you know? Well, when, when this is, um, when this is done well, what this medium is about is the viewer should feel like they're at the table playing with their friends. Yeah. That, that, that sense of kinship and connection, Mm -hmm. um, is, is ultimately what you're selling, you know, um, when done well, you know, uh, when, when done poorly, of course, that is not the case. And, and a lot of times those, those streams, you know, struggle along for a little while and usually just sort of peter out. Right. Is it when you started doing like playing D and D like as just friends around the table versus when you started playing it professionally, is there a translation between the two and how you play and how it's done besides like the obvious technical side of it? Not really. Um, yeah, that's for, cool. for me, how I run the games, how I run the game, but there is this one significant difference between a home game and a stream. Mm-hmm. Um, a home game is a social activity. Uh, the fact that you get together, you share a meal, you talk about Eternals, you know, you you, right. you rant, rant about your boyfriend or your girlfriend, your job, mm-hmm. and eventually you roll some dice. Sure. That's all <laughs> a part of it, you know? Yeah. Uh, a stream cuts all of that out. And uh, there there is sure. just the meat of the narrative. Sure. Um, because, you know, an example I always give, if anybody's heard me give this speech before, um, Back in the early 2000s, when Vince McMahon uh, finally bought out WCW and kind of won, you know, the wrestling wars, yeah. I watched an interview with him and somebody asked, like, well, what are you going to do now that you don't have any more competition? And he said, I've always got competition. My competition is everything else a person could be doing. They could uh... read a book. They could watch something else. They could go spend time with their family. They could go to the movies. You know, they, sure. they could do anything. So I still have to create something that is going to be worthy of that person stopping what they're doing and tuning in and paying attention. Uh... Um, and, you know, and I tell people it's the same thing, even with your home games. If you have if you consistently have problems booking your group to play, that's your problem. You are sure. not providing an experience to them that is substantive enough that they make attendance a priority. And I'm not counting, you know, everything. Stuff happens. Sometimes people got to work like King at a babysitter. I mean, life <laughs> totally. happens. I, I just mean, <laughs> I know consistently, mean. Yeah. If, you ha- if you have problems, that's what it is. You're not giving them something that is worth stopping everything else for. Sure. You know? If given the option, you want them to choose that one all the time. And if they're not, it is lacking versus the thing they're choosing and over it. I happen to know that there is a game here that is uh, every once in a while is first come first serve um a wow. text goes out it's a star wars game with a, awesome. with a lot of people in this community and it's like tonight's the night first six people are in and it's just a mad wow. scramble every time and you know and people will the, cancel plans to go be in the game because the game is awesome you know wow yeah mm-hmm. that's wild mm-hmm. what what's the longest campaign you've ever played Four years, Pathfinder, from level one to level 20 and all 10 Mythic Tears did the whole thing. Wow. How was that? Mm-hmm. A lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot. But but it but it helped inform all the other stuff I do now from, you know, long form storytelling, um, you know, high level storytelling, all of that stuff. Sure. I, I, I learned in those trenches. Man, what's the longest mm-hmm. like session, single session? So back in the day, especially in high school, we'd get together and we'd just play all night. That's what we'd do. We'd, cool. we, we would just, we'd play the entire night like it was a sleepover, but when it was time to go to sleep, you just got in your car and went home. Right. You know, like we, we'd do that on a Friday. So we started like nine or 10 at night and play till six or seven in the morning and then go home. Wow. That's mm-hmm. so cool. I'm relatively mm-hmm. new. I just started three years ago mm-hmm. and we're in our, we just hit two years in the current campaign we're playing. Mm-hmm. And it is a pretty wild thing. Like, I, I forgot who it was. Somebody, it was TJ. TJ mm-hmm. Storm was on the show. And he mentioned that talking about D&D is sometimes explaining like a dream that you mm-hmm. had to someone. Mm-hmm. And it is this weird thing I find with D&D is 
the memories that you have of playing the game are real in your mind and with the people that you did them with. And I think that's kind of the magic of like D and D specifically. It's really cool. I just I mean, I love it. The feelings are real, you know, because your brain can't tell the difference between something that is real and something that is vividly imagined. That's right. why you can worry about something and stress yourself out. You can fantasize about something and get a physiological reaction. Your your brain doesn't know. Sure. So when you feel the the mind and emotions of the fact that you went to war with that dragon and you you're rolling the dice and you're getting all the serotonin and the dopamine and all of that, it's real to you. Yeah, it's real to you. So and cool. there's there's no way to explain it in a way that doesn't sound absolutely in, yeah. ridiculous to <laughs> yeah. someone who wasn't there. That's true. Sure. You know? But uh, yeah, that's kind of another favorite thing I like about it. It's like, yeah, I was this I was this tiny old frog with a warrior shield. And you're like, you you're what? It's such a it's such mm -hmm. a, a different language to people that don't know it. I mm -hmm. think it's great. Mm -hmm. I think it's really cool. Mm -hmm. it's, when you said you talked about like doing um, like overnight did anyone ever fall asleep oh i mean you know near, near the end of the road type thing but i mean sure. we also were like you know hopped up on coffee and jolt sure. you know what i mean like yeah you, you usually when, when when people started getting bleary eyed you know that was when you were like okay it's time to it's time to be looking to, to wrap this up type deal yeah sure you're like are they crying or are they just falling asleep it's like could be there's, no, there's, there's no crying in baseball yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh there's definitely crying in D, D though oh man definitely <laughs> crying in D, D. I measure my success as a storyteller and how quickly i make someone cry honestly yeah not right not with just you. not just that i enjoy their pain although i do yeah. it is that knows how quickly they can access that genuine of a human emotion because if you can cry about something you are in it yeah agreed you know? that's yep. when you're fully not tunnel vision in the best way personal record is the second 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 session but you know really that's, uh, mm -hmm. well done Clapping. second session yep second so. session that's good that's mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. Man, was it stressful making an actual like D, D comic no um the dungeons and dragons of dark and wish yeah. is my my love letter to D. &D. Cool. um it, it started based off of some world of warcraft fan fiction so fan Fantastic. fiction pays off kids yeah you know? get it um and when I had the chance to to flesh it out, I just knew I, I, I took so seriously the opportunity to add a link to the chain of continuity of the Forgotten Realms, this place that cool. I've spent hundreds and thousands of hours in and yeah. uh, in, in, in daydreaming in. And, and I really pushed the envelope with the things I asked. And I was surprised. Um, I got yeses on pretty much everything stuff that I thought was really going to be like a scuffle and I was going to have to fight for it was just, it was nothing the cool. only thing I hit any problem with whatsoever mm -hmm. was I had my Kinku to live again uh and and uh -huh. he's you know he's my messenger he's my Hermes so I was like sure. I need him to be able to fly sure. and I gave him a cloak of bat wings and they were like no he can't have a cloak of bat wings <laughs> and I was like I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, it's like, well, it's like King, you know, um, there's all kinds of ways that Kenku can fly. Like, I mean, I get the curse, but I mean, there's a lot of ways sure. to fly, you know? <laughs> right. It, and they were just adamant that they were like, no, he can't fly. And I was like, but he must fly or this whole story falls apart. Sure. And I, I was like, I'll make him an Aarakocra instead. Like, I don't like, come on. Like, I got to do something. Mm -hmm. And they were like, well, you could give him a broom of flying. And I'm like, wait, hold on a second. <laughs> the issue is not that the Kenku's flying. The issue is that he just can't have that item. And they sure. were like, yeah. And I'm like, can he have boots of flying? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, done. That's why he's got boots of flying. That's um, so funny. Yeah. And to this day, I have no idea why that was a sticking point. I thought for sure, like a, a yeah. new product was going to come out, some new major character or something. Nope. That's nope. so funny. What a random this hill to die on. <laughs> But the moment I realized, I mean, that, that ate up about two weeks of back and forth. <laughs> they were like, this cannot be. And I'm like, and yet it must be, or we're redoing all of this. Sure. You know? um, yeah. Besides that, it, it was, it was green lights, the green lights all wow. across the board. How cool is that? Having like a physical representation of something you made. Every time I walk into a Barnes and Noble and I see it, I giggle yeah. like a little kid still. Oh, like seeing, so cool. seeing something I did on the shelf of Barnes and Noble is just like seeing it on the shelf of comic shops, having yeah. people bring it to me to get autographed and stuff is just like. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I love, love that. How mm -hmm. could you not? How could you not? 
it was it was it was really great it was really fun it was really really fun and, and i'll tell you um you know by now most people know that my my co-creator my artist tess fowler was going through cancer at the time she didn't know she's going through cancer she just didn't feel well all the time mm-hmm. you know in in retrospect found out oh you've got cancer yeah and um at one point when she was going through her treatment she's all good now thank god which Amazing. is why i can tell the story yeah but um at one point she said to me, she's like, there's a real chance that a darkened wish is the last thing I will ever create in this world. And I will be very happy and proud if that's the last thing I ever do. And I was like, (laughs) 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 Like, I'm not right in the heart. I don't, I don't know how to process that really. (laughs) So I need you to, (laughs) 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 Ooh, no. Uh, What is happening to my eyes? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. This is dusty in here. Like a lot. Yeah. 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 I mean, but imagine the opposite, by the way. Imagine if she's like, I've lived out of spite. You know what I yeah, mean? Like, yeah. I cannot go out on that nonsense. Yeah. You know? Just, oh, must survive. Check in periodically. The, the hate flow through you. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. why you make sure she signs it when she does. You're like, you're writing your name on that, right? Just in case. Mm-hmm. Don't you write in mm-hmm. SpongeBob you, you, SquarePants? You, so you Alan Smithing me. What is yeah. this? Yeah. yeah. I'm watching. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. How did you get involved with Motherlands? Because that is a great idea. Uh, so Tanya and I were already friends, and she was going back and forth uh, with Twitch about creating some original content for Twitch. Awesome. Um, and, and they'd been in negotiations for a few months. And uh, finally, they had a deal where they had to deliver like 30 hours of content by the end of the year, which went just when you just said it seemed like it was a long time. Mm-hmm. And I pulled out the calendar and I was like, well, then you need to be done by here. Um, Cause you know, you need to be done by like second week in December. Cause everybody's going to be going on holidays, which means you have to start by here, which means you need to have the system ready, but to the game ready to play by here. And it ended Ooh. up, we had like four to six weeks, I think Wow. from, from scratch to have a playable game to go live on stream. Ooh. And um, we started kicking around some ideas immediately. And she was like, well, you want to be lead developer? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, there you go. Always yeah, let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Yep. You know, wow. let's do it. Be, build so your parachute cool. on the way down. Yeah. So it's, yeah. Uh, but it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's, it's been a lot of fun seeing that world, those worlds mm-hmm. come to life, you know, Amazing we, we, characters. Just, we just, we just had a, uh, a developers meeting on Saturday that we're, 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 we're pounding out the new system. I think um, it's getting close. It's getting, we're, we're, to, we're to the point that we need to test it, beat on it, see where it breaks, you know, cool. but, but, but at least on paper, it's coming together. That's amazing. I love mm-hmm. when I see an idea that feels like, Oh, how has this not happened before? And I'm really glad it's happening now. And that was one of those things. That is, that is one of the hallmarks of a good idea. When, when you hear it and you think to yourself, how did I not think of this? You know, yep. that's when, that's when, you know, it's a good idea. I so, totally agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking it's, of good ideas, it's been a grand old time. I can't not ask you about dear America from a black guy. Nah. You know, uh, it, I know this is going to come as a complete and total shock as I say it, dear listener. <laughs> uh, but making a movie by yourself in a pandemic is tough. And yeah. uh yeah, then yeah, it's tough. But we're chopping away at it. Um, it's a beautiful it's it, especially because you know the kind of what it's about has changed two or three times now. Sure. Um, you know, going into the election, I was like, y'all, you know, yeah, and then I hear you. you know, and then uh, <laughs> you know, all that January 6th nonsense was kind of uh-huh. like, well, okay, you know, that's another curve here. Yep. But yeah, uh chopping away at it. Well, because it, it's still necessary it's even dare Agreed. i say more, more necessary by the day and the premise of it um mm-hmm. is just trying to foster meaningful conversations to to get back to a place where we can talk to each other with an understanding of of each other's basic humanity mm-hmm. you know to not just look at them just look at people that don't agree with you just as the enemy or somehow inhuman sure. to at least be like well you're a person and i'm a person let's just start right. with that you know what i mean you Absolutely. love your family. I love mine. All right. You know what I mean? Like there, yeah. there's some, there's, we, there's we can things agree on we something. Can, we, we can agree on some things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I, I, I do not mean this in some kumbaya. Can't we all just get along? Cause Absolutely. Some, there's, there's some people that it is like, we cannot. No, yep. we cannot. Yeah. No, Absolutely. you and I are adversaries. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying that is not the vast majority of us. It's yeah. not the vast majority of us. And, and unfortunately, if we allow only the zealots, to have their say 
uh, then we will all crash on this ship of state. So yeah. facts. It's true. Yep. Was it always a documentary in your head? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I mean, I've wanted to do it for a while, all the way back to, uh, um, I believe it was 2016, when Alton Sterling and Philando Castile were murdered in the same week. Yeah. You know, that sure. was when I was like, oh, right. the same week, y'all. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, the yeah. same week, y'all. Yeah. You know, that was... um. That was that was very painful to me. That that was that that was a transitionary point for me. Sure. So much so when George Floyd came along, and I saw the protests starting. I mean, the first week or two, I was kind of like, "Oh, well, they killed another one of us." Okay, yeah. and then you know, it was like, "Oh wait, y'all are really mad this time." Oh okay, wait, are we are we are we doing this? Oh, we're doing this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Right. Let's go. Yeah. You know? Um. <laughs> And uh, I, I, I was, it, it was, I, I think that was a, a unique confluence of situations, though, in that um, everybody was frustrated and everybody was home. Sure. You know? Good point. And, 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 and there was just, there was no escaping that gross injustice mm -hmm. that, you know, eight minutes and 45 seconds of watching a human being be executed. Yeah. And there's, there's just no rationalizing it there's just no justifying it and True. everybody just had so much pent-up frustration and hostility yeah you know that it was True. easy to just you know yeah that's what i mean i think documentaries are really really important i've had a few mm -hmm. documentarians on my show as well to like show the things that are they're there but not everybody knows that they're there and i think it's really important just for society to have mm -hmm. those kind of stories told so i was really excited when i heard that you were doing it and then I remembered we're in a pandemic and you're making it on your own. And I was like, dude, Herculean. It's incredible. Uh, e e I, I describe it as Sisyphean. <laughs> oh, you know, no. it's, it's more, <laughs> and then it's back. a red as a rock. <laughs> it is a rock, man. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I really stressed about it. It's it sometimes so I was like, I got to get it done. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. And I do, I, m I must deliver because I said I would, but it sure. is more important that it say what it need to say, you know, Agreed. Uh, in, 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 into, into a place that I am proud of. Um, I've been, um, you know, um, beset by an astonishing number of blessings and opportunities like you know, doing G4 and all this stuff. Yeah. And I've seen um, that back, <laughs> you know, I came into the studio like two weeks ago and they were like, Hey, can we take a picture of your back? And I was like, <laughs> yeah of course and they, and they were like can you take your shirt off and i'm like yeah <laughs> i've heard this happens in la <laughs> yeah right i'm like wait this is a very different kind of audition yeah. i thought i was <laughs> what do saying, i get I'm not, I'm not saying no but i'm like <laughs> yeah. wait a minute let me just make sure this this job exists doesn't it that's right yeah. i've, I've seen a documentary a like that I know where this that's is right. going hold on if i see that black leather couch i'm like wait <laughs> yeah. a second that's right just wait just <laughs> one minute here yeah so take notes uh, of the exits <laughs> yeah when uh i went in and they um yeah and legit they were like will you do it i'm like yep and then and then they showed me the old picture and they were like this is what we're doing i'm like oh uh, okay cool Great. yeah Whew. yeah Deep breath but yes, i don't i'd already i'd already committed to tasteful nudity <laughs> sure. at that point i'm like Woo. you gotta yeah. do what you gotta do man hey man you know what i mean get it get a i get respect a, get, it get, you got to do, got to risk it to get the biscuit, you know? That's yeah. right. <laughs> it's, I'll tell you this, uh, because by, by the time this comes out, it will have already happened. There's uh, mm -hmm. there's some games in, in things for the launch tomorrow. Hell and, yeah. you know, we had a whole big meeting and it was like, who's willing to do this? You know, who doesn't want to do this thing? Bunch of hands go up. Who doesn't want to do this thing? Bunch of hands go up. Who doesn't want to do this thing? Bunch of hands go up. And finally they look at me and they're like, are there anything you don't want to do? I'm like, sign me up for literally anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's go. Let's that's go. How, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. <laughs> I mean, do I want to do all of these things? Of course not, but there's only going to be one new relaunch of G4. You there know you what go. I mean? So yeah. If I Get do it. something goofy or whatever, then I'm like, there you go. You know, maybe I'll be an internet beam or something, you know, like, let's go. You know, it's the, the, it's the spirit of the enterprise is to just get in, get in and be part of the solution, man. Yeah. Yes. I love mm -hmm. it. I love that. I love people like that, that just get in, like, just say yes, see what happens. 
Just see what happens. You never know. Just see, just see what happens. You know what I mean? It, not, you know, obviously if, if you got like a, uh, 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 you know, a uh, moral objection or it feels wrong of to course. my previous point. Of course, of course. That's the gut, like but you if, said. But but if you're just nervous or shy or like, ooh, what if I look silly? Well, whatever. Let's go. That's you know? right. Next thing you yeah. know, you're a back model. Who knows? Next, Possibilities. next thing you know, <laughs> back model. I, so. I, 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 can, I can say I've done I've done topless <laughs> modeling for Comcast in NBC. That's what I can say. Boom. Yeah. I mm -hmm. love it. I love it. Do you have any advice for people who like want to do the things that you're doing? All five million of them. <laughs> <sighs> you just, you know, um, keep. Like I said, well, the first thing, like I said before, is, you know, enjoy the process. Smart. And, and, and keep being conscious at honing your craft, because you, mm. when you start and you should start, uh, you'll be terrible. You think right. you're good. You aren't. Yeah. You know? <laughs> And but be mindful of that and continue trying to improve. Sure. Uh, just doing a lot of a thing is not the same as practice. That in and of itself does not make you any better. I, I know some people that have been playing these games a long time and they're still hot garbage because, <laughs> you know, nothing has changed, you know. Mm -hmm. So be be mindful. If, if you're going to take the time to want to do something, then become a student of that thing. I mean, sure. the, the, there's a reason why I like talking about writing. I like talking about martial arts. I like talking about gaming and streaming and marketing and business as much as I like doing those things. Yeah, because they interest me as concepts. They interest me as crafts, you know, that that but and therefore I enjoy putting that effort into it. Mm. Uh, I enjoy putting in the reps figuratively and literally yeah you know to to do what must be done you know sure when when um so much of this there there is a talent component and there really is a networking component at least sure. in, in the streaming space you know there there is it's a small world and we all know each other right um you know, when people tell you things like it's only who you know, those people are lazy and are making yeah. <laughs> excuses for their own non-performance. You're right. Absolutely. But who you know is a big part of it, but it's not mm -hmm. just who you know, but what they know you for. Yeah. Um, and so you have to be very mindful and cognizant of your brand because your brand is just your reputation. You know, sure. sure. When I when I walked in the geek and sundry. They thought I was just there to do a relatively small thing. I knew that I was there to take over the place. <laughs> and I knew I was going to accomplish it by doing three things. Hell yeah. I would make sure everybody knew that I would always be on time and prepared. Mm -hmm. I would always be easy to work with. And I would always try my best. I Perfect. mean, you know, what your best is varies from day to day. But if you put me on camera, I was going to swing at it. Just a, a thousand percent. You there knew you, if you gave me the ball. I was going to make something happen with it. Get and it, it worked. You know, and yeah. uh, now I'm, I'm 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 here again, starting uh, beginning again at a, at, a, at a new outlet, and I have a, a plan again. You know, so <laughs> we'll we'll see. You know, I mean, the fact that I made it this far was already part of the plan. I did D and D live um, with G four because mm -hmm. I had such a strong reputation with WotC. They wanted me again. Reputation right. got me in the door. When I sure. started working with G4, I made sure I knew all the producers. I made sure everybody knew my name. I, you know, was joke Smart. around with them. Anybody need a drink type thing? You know, I wanted to get across to them that I was a chill dude to work with who knew what I was doing. Yeah. Fast forward six months, they need somebody to run D and D. Who's got top of mind awareness? Me. You know. Get it. Mm -hmm. I love none that. of the none of this happens at random, man. There's sure. been a, a significant element of luck. Of course, but. You know, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. If I wasn't ready for it, even when those doors open, it wouldn't matter. So 100% agreed. I mm -hmm. just finished an acting book recently and it said, people say it's who you know. I would argue it's who wants to know you. Mm -hmm. And I keep that in my mind a lot. I'm like, ah, absolutely. Is there something that you haven't done yet that you do want to do? I am blessed in that. I'm doing 100% of everything I want in life right now. Amazing. But I want those things on a larger scale. Get it. You know, like I, I write totally. and make movies. I want to write and make bigger movies. I get to yeah. act. I want to act on bigger stuff. I get to write. I want to write bigger things. You know what I mean? I just. Sure. It's geometric now. I love it. I love it. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to watch all the things that you work on. 
I appreciate yeah. that. You know, we'll be able to think back that you're like, he was talking about that when we were here. And I'm like, that's true. I was. That's right. Yep. They'll be like, did you know this was going to happen? And me and you at the same time could be like, yeah, of course. And then you and then you go for the sword. I'll be your bodyguard. <laughs> exactly. They're like, did he have a sword? I'm like, that's yeah. how they get you. That's how they get you. You that's didn't expect right. it. It was right there on his belt the whole time. The yeah. whole time. It's that mm-hmm. quick. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, dude, B. Dave, we've been talking for over an hour already. This was so fun. I really appreciate you hanging out with me because the most valuable thing you could do is give someone your time. That is true. Before I let you go, I got to ask, where can people find you? Where can they find your stuff? Give me it. What you got? B. Dave Walters on the Tweetograms. Uh, I'm, I'm there everywhere. I'm somewhere doing something. No longer seven days a week. I'm down to like five days a week. Um, I don't expect you to keep track of all of it. I barely can myself. That's why you follow <laughs> me on the Tweetograms at B. Dave Walters. But I think the biggest thing is invitation to party. The Scoundrels of Waterdeep Fridays at 3 p.m. on G4. Boom. I love it. I love it. It's weird to say out loud. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.